I want to welcome Ryan Manet, marine scientist. He joins me on the Zoom line to break down the story of the weekend. Uh, so many in Tobago are still very much concerned. Some of the, the popular spots still closed. And we saw via the, the <laughs> that development with, with the injury. Firstly, let me say good morning. And I thought it was fake news at first, but when the sources and you started to see, you know, the CNC3 and others posting, you recognize with now this, this is the real deal. And many were taken by surprise. Mr. Manet, thanks for coming on. And I look forward to our discussion this morning. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. And yes, I like to I echo your sentiment. You know, it was a bit of a shock at first when we saw the news. And, you know, the first reaction is this must be fake. Yeah. But then once the news started coming in, you realize, OK, it is real. So, yeah. Well, we're happy to report that the uh, tourist uh, is getting the best care in Tobago and the government, well, yeah. the THA, they're going to cover all expenses and his stay because he was carded to leave actually um, Friday from, well, Korea carded to leave, a matter of fact, I think the same day. But obviously, you know, he needs to, yeah. uh, to mend. But let's get to this particular incident. How rare is a situation like this? I can't recall really in recent history or recent time a shark attacking anyone in Trinidad and Tobago waters. Yeah, so shark attacks are incredibly rare. Um, I think globally, the statistics, where the latest statistics compiled up to 2022, would have been approximately about 60, an average of 64 shark attacks globally, and six of those were fatalities. Now, if you consider the millions of users of the ocean space on a daily basis on a global scale, um, 64 attacks is very, very small. So the probability of actually being attacked by a shark is very small. You know, they they give a, they usually give a comparison, say you're more likely to be struck by lightning than to be attacked by a shark. So that shows you how, you know, small the chances are wow, and how that, rare it is. That was a real, real hard luck there for the, for the tourists. Now, what can trigger a shark? Now, it's very rare. But clearly, you know, the shark would have been triggered. We always hear of blood. We heard that sharks, you know, they're drawn to, to blood. I mean, I, I wasn't there, you weren't there, we don't know. Uh, from yeah. your, you know, investigations and research over the years, what can trigger this uh, very rare occurrence? Okay, so first of all, you know, there are so many different factors that can result in a shark attack. Um, mm -hmm. The, the most common situation in a shark attack is mistaken identity. Uh, the shark thinks that the person swimming is um, is prey or one of the your usual prey. So sharks are generally attracted to splashing in, in the water because in a lot of cases, an injured fish would move kind of erratic and splash around. So once there is splashing, um, the shark can perceive that as its usual prey and come in. Um, but there are so many other factors. There could be, you know, um, it could be a territorial thing. It could be an injured shark looking for an easy meal. You know, there are so many different factors at play. And without knowing the situation leading up to this particular attack, it's really impossible to say what would have triggered this particular shark to attack the individual. Understood. You know, so it's just really a, probably a case of, you know, but wrong place at the wrong time, yeah. and a very unfortunate situation. I think. Very, very unfortunate. Now, I've been reading on this story and doing my own research, and what I've recognized, someone would have mentioned, and I guess you could either confirm or refute, that bull sharks being so close to the coastline is a result of a very healthy ecosystem. Uh, walk us through the species, how many sharks are in the waters, and if indeed a bull shark, which is really rare, uh, so close to the, to the shore, is indeed a result of a healthy ecosystem. So there is some truth to that. Um, not necessarily a bull shark in particular, but um, sharks are generally considered apex predators, and they play a key role in maintaining the health of an ecosystem. So they're what they call a keystone species. Um, when you have when you have a healthy population of sharks, it indicates that your ocean is healthy. So just simply just seeing a bull shark close ashore doesn't necessarily mean that your population of sharks is healthy. 
Um, it just means that this one individual came close to shore. But the general idea is once you have healthy apex predators or healthy population of apex predators, it's a good indicator that the rest of your food chain is in fact healthy. And um, just to make it clear, bull sharks are not um, particularly unusual in our waters. You know, we have over 40 species of sharks, which include large coastal species. Over 40, like the bull shark. 40 yes, species? 40 species have been observed in our waters over the years through research. Mm. Um, and yeah, they include the bull shark and the tiger shark and the hammerhead sharks. So they are known to be in our waters. We may not see them very often because sharks tend to avoid people. Uh, so just to put it out there, sharks don't normally attack people. Humans are not on the food chain, uh, on, on the menu generally for sharks. Hmm. But, you know, the, once you're in the ocean, there's always the likelihood or the possibility that a shark is somewhere nearby. And I would imagine, I mean, to tell someone not to panic, I mean, easier said than done. Yeah. Because especially coming out of the incident in Tobago, um, so many were scared. A matter of fact, 10 beaches remain closed, still off limits. Yes. Uh, what's your advice to sea bathers, sea goers, uh, concerning just, you know, how they maneuver the waters? If they see a shark, what, what's your, your, your first, you know, what, what protocols should be considered? And, uh, and, and do you agree with this closing off of the beaches at this point in time? Um, yes, I do agree that the beaches should have been closed. That, that's a the correct step that they took, just out of abundance of caution. Um, especially seeing that they've been seeing a shark um, at other bays around. Uh, so closing the beaches is a good idea while they assess the situation. In general, um, if, you, if you encounter a shark in the ocean, uh, there are certain things you can do to help reduce your risk of attracting that shark. So, for example, um, try not to splash too much because splashing attracts sharks. If you're going in the ocean, you know, don't don't go alone. Go with a group because sharks tend to, like I said before, tend to avoid humans. So if you're in a group, um, they're less likely to approach you. Um, Try not to wear too bright colors because sharks might be attracted to the colors. Uh, little things like that, no shiny things. So mm. avoid shiny jewelry. Um, and in general, avoid going into the ocean during the dusk and dawn hours because those are the times when sharks are generally most active. What if you yeah? I was going to ask, in terms of the bounty that was put on the shark. Now, yeah. now obviously, it was retracted. Um, yeah. what, what, what was your initial thought when you saw that $10,000 reward for the shark? Because I saw fishermen gearing up. Everybody was, man was willing to leave Trinidad to go to Tobago to, to, to find the shark. What, your, your, your take? Okay, so um, I think that was a, a rush decision, decision to put out that bounty. Um, however, there is no evidence to show that culling sharks or taking these drastic measures like installing shark nets, there's no in evidence to show that these measures actually reduce the or, or stop the interaction between humans and sharks. Um, what bounties do is um, encourage the culling of sharks, which is detrimental to the shark population, without actually solving the problem. But then, because, but then, but then this shark yeah. would have tasted blood. So I'm, I'm thinking here, this particular shark, if they found the actual shark that was part of that attack, uh, should this shark be in a beak, basically? <laughs> well, again, there's no evidence to show that sharks acquire the taste of human flesh just from, you know, from an, an attack. Uh, so you can have, and in fact, there, there's very little evidence to show that sharks are attracted to human blood at all in the first place. So, you know, sending out a bounty, well, putting out a bounty to, to hunt sharks would encourage persons to go out looking for a shark. And because there was so little information, I mean, even though the, the eyewitness identified the shark as a bull shark, I don't think there has yet been any actual confirmation that that was the actual species. Well, there were lots so, of sightings there. Huh? People, I mean, yeah, we saw, but, we saw but, the videos on social, people, oh, look yes. the shark, look the shark. People, exactly. People, people but, said a ball, you know. How do you know that that was the correct shark? There are hundreds of thousands of sharks in the world. 
and there are lots of sharks around Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. How do you know that the shark they saw at, say, Gibson Jetty is the same shark responsible for the attack? Well, I mean, there was no way to confirm that. Well, I mean, I, I, and I agree. I mean, we probably would assume because if if we if we're not accustomed to seeing a shark, shark just bite a tourist, and all of a sudden a shark just dead hanging out in the in the in the in the waters, people would assume that's the shark. I mean, it's it was such a this yeah. is such a mystery. It, it, was, it was unusual, and it, yeah. well, it is a strange, it could be a coincidence, it could be a strange coincidence. It, I'm not saying it's not the same shark, it could be, we yeah. don't know. But what we were seeing, the reports we were seeing coming out of Tobago, I saw at least four different um, images of sharks where people were saying, oh, we caught the shark. Mm. Now, first of all, we saw bull sharks being caught, and we saw tiger sharks being caught. So, you know, which shark is it really? Mm. And then we saw sharks ranging in size from six feet all the way up to probably 10, 11 feet. Yeah. So we, there was no real concrete information to identify the culprit, if you want to call it that, of yeah. this particular attack. Yeah. So to have a, a blanket bounty on sharks when you're not sure which shark it is. Well, it was retracted. Eh? They pulled it back yeah. one time because which people... Was, I, I was really happy to see yeah. that. And the yeah. chief sec did make some very important points in his um, in his speech that evening, stating the importance of sharks and yeah. that kind of thing. So, and, you know... And he apologized. I guess, you know, in yes. all, all the excitement, you know, you're, you're, you're getting advice. You're not too sure. It never happened before. So yeah. people were up in arms. I want to thank you, Ryan, for for you know the perspective uh really quick before we leave on a lighter note i've always heard what's inside bake is, cat, is catfish is it catfish or is it really shark is it uh, yes from, or no? from all the information i have available i can i i will say it's shark okay cool. i believe it's shark yes okay so i'm not eating catfish after all i'm actually eating shark well done ryan manet thank you for the perspective for some clarity on this uh most unfortunate circumstance there in tobago that's Thanks for having me. Most, you're most welcome. Marine scientist Ryan Manet touching base with us. Much more right after the break. <laughs>